Hello everyone, it's Richard here. In this video we're going to look at glass print surfaces for 3D printers and specifically borosilicate glass that I was having a few issues with. Uh, anyone that follows me on Google Plus or any of the things I've been doing with the big box 3D printer will know I've been testing with PET based filaments and these are things like tea glass from Tolman and PETG and recycled uh, uh, recycle PET and various other things. So the issues you've got with PETG and PETT are that they stick very very strongly to borosilicate glass to the point where they can actually rip out chunks when the when everything cools down from the borosilicate glass. It's quite a serious problem. A lot of people have this. It's not something that's just specific to the big box and in fact the guys from E3D when they specified the glass build plate specified a really top quality sheet. It's optical instrument glass, uh, borosilicate glass and been ground very flat so it's, it's probably the highest quality build plate that I've ever used and that's actually quite interesting because over the years I've really concentrated on using mirror glass and we can't use mirror glass on the big box because it uses an infrared sensor to trigger uh, so it doesn't actually like the fact that you've got a mirror glass surface but I'm a big fan of using glass and clean glass so I don't like particularly having to use tapes or glues or adhesives or any types of surface coatings that can wear out or wear down or just generally cause you issues having to scrape them back off or clean them off I'm sick to death of doing that so I don't want to have to keep on doing that and I want something that I can print PLA and PET most of the time because that's mostly what I print. If I want to do something else then I'll quite happily use other types of build surfaces to get the better adhesion with uh, ABS or PC ABS for example. Wolfbite is actually fantastic for that. So we've got a few things that we can use but I wanted to find a solution to this borosilicate glass problem and I think I have. So this is basically me talking through it. Um, I've tested lots of different materials. Uh, there was some copper clad boards and fiberglass boards and other types of materials like acrylic and polycarbonate that I've tested but I came back to glass and specifically back to the same uh, borosilicate glass that we had delivered with the big box 3D printer which is a nice sheet of glass. Okay so I wanted a coating that would go over the top of that or something that would that would work and after a lot of testing I, I came to the conclusion that I might as well try the last thing that was on my list which was a surface protector that you use on mobile phones and uh, laptops and tablets. So these things you can get cut to size, this sort of thing, and they're actually pretty generic. This is one from China, you can tell it's got terribly bad spelling on the back here, spatial tempering process um, and various other things. Uh, tiny cracked particles made me laugh a bit, so I'm not quite sure what that means explosion proof grass protective film basically it's a it's a, a multi-layer coating you've got a silicon sticky base which pushes out all the bubbles you've got a shatterproof layer which is probably polycarbonate you've got the tempered glass and then you've got this special coating the coating on the top is an oil oilophobic oilophobic not quite sure how you pronounce that and that's basically something they put on to stop fingerprints and things staying on the glass. They, they will go on there but they're actually very easy to wipe off. And the instructions you get with these and the advice generally is that um, you don't use any harsh chemicals or, or things on them like especially not alcohol cleaners or anything like that. Uh, and actually that surface coating will last a very 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 long time. So I've tried this, I've stuck this on to my damaged uh, borosilicate glass sheet that I had and actually it works really really well, surprisingly well. And I was a bit worried that the oleophobic which is hydrophobic so water doesn't like water it pulls up on the top of it and it doesn't like grease allows you to push grease straight off but it actually seems to create a sort of a lot more van der Waal forces and suction to the part so that's great for uh, PLA you can print PLA on it I found that parts are uh, about that size this sort of size um, are fine. Anything smaller than that is better to have a brim but you'll find that with most glasses, glass sort of print surfaces anyway, um, very tiny parts you're better having a little bit of a brim round to help the adhesion. Um, but P PLA seems to work fine. I've tried lots of different PLAs and that's okay. I'm going to go through lots of the other materials. I've tried uh, lay brick and wood fill because they were two of the really difficult ones that I had that used to bond to glass and never come off. So they, they, they work well on this and they do actually release at the end. The main thing was PET, what would happen? So 
The very first thing I did, in fact, was I just filled the entire build plate full of big PET parts that I was printing, and they're big box parts, so they're, they're quite large, they're these sort of size parts, and I just printed a whole lot out, and I ran the video camera just in case anything happened, like the glass sheet exploded or anything dramatic happened, but three hours later, um, the whole sheet had printed, lots of parts covered everything, and they all just just released at the end. I used a normal cooldown cycle, not an elevated one or a lengthened cooldown cycle, just let it print. And at the end, I pulled off every one of them with no problem at all, just with my fingers. Uh, and it didn't damage the surface, didn't do anything. So I'm calling that a success and a massive triumph. I've tried tea glass from uh, Tolman. I've tried um, NGen, which is the new filament from Colorfab and I've tried every PETT and PETG sample that I've got and they all seem to stick and release at the end and not cause any damage and you can use the scraper if you want to. What's really interesting is when you try to lift off the part it sort of feels almost sticky and you can put it back on and it, it sort of sucks itself back on you can slide it around you just feel this resistance. There's no reason why it shouldn't last a very long time. They claim that it's very, very strong. If you don't use harsh chemicals and just normal cleaners, you're okay. Um, my normal cleaning fluid is this, Mr. Muscle window and glass with vinegar, it's quite important, and a microfiber cloth. And they recommend with these sort of screen protectors that all you use is a microfiber cloth. You don't use any anything at all. And that's what I've been doing. I've just been wiping it over, not you know, really just to get the fingerprints off uh, and nothing else. And it's been printing solidly. I've printed probably about 700 grams or so of PET. Um, and I've tried big, big sort of bars as well. So I've tried big surface areas, small surface areas, high infill, low infill, um, and it's all working quite well. So I thought I'd let you know about that. The sheet themselves, they're only, uh, they come like this and they're, I believe they're laser cut. So I was gonna see whether a company like E3D could get hold of a Chinese manufacturer to make this exact size. This one that I've, that I've used on the big box is 300 by 200 because it's designed for the Surface Pro 4 which is a perfect size, well pretty much perfect, it's like one of the largest sheets you can get and this was about uh, seven pounds, so like ten dollars to get hold of this from a UK seller with free postage. If you go to China, you can pick them up for about five dollars, three pounds, dire directly delivered to you. So they're not expensive. I believe they're laser cut because they have to have these special indents for some of the tablets and laptops that, that they go on mobile phones, and they have holes cut out of them as well. But they are real solid, proper, tough and tough and glass. You might find them called Gorilla Glass, but I don't believe this is real Gorilla Glass. This is just uh, generic Chinese laminated. But it does have the surface coating. I've pulled water over the top and had an interesting effect with air to see that it actually does that. And it just seems to work. So it'd be really interesting if anyone else out there fancies trying it. It's very easy to apply. You just peel off the back and the silicon coating just sort of sucks down and sticks. You can't move it again, but once it's stuck down on there, it works. And um, the only thing I did do is put a little bit of Kapton tape on the back because I put the cutout, cutout surface, uh, which has got this little, because of the, I guess the, uh, the Microsoft Surface Pro 4 has some sort of cutout here for uh, cameras and various things. Um, and I put that at the back and then I put a piece of strip of Kapton tape just in case the head uh, knocked against there because if the, the most de the delicate part of any toughened glass is on the edges and on the corners so I was just a bit conscious I didn't want anything knocking onto that but actually I've been quite rough with it just tried to be sort of generally uh, using it and seeing if it'll break because I, I, I want to know whether it's going to work or not long term um, and if anyone else fancies having a go then do let me know and, and uh, report what your findings are but that's it really just wanted to update you on that and see whether anyone else thought it was a good idea of course you could get a toughened sheet of glass, but you get some real benefits by using the uh, borosilicate glass with this film on top. And of course then you can always just flip it back over if you want to print on the borosilicate glass for any other materials that might like it a bit better. Um, it only adds 0.3 of a millimetre offset to your, um, uh, to your uh, Z offset, so it's not a big deal. And once you flipped it over again, that offset will still be there because it's still the same thickness. Um, so I think it's a really good solution and it might be something that, that uh, if we can actually 
get these pieces of glass, these laminate sheets cut to size and fitted onto bore silicate glass uh, as well, then actually this could be one of the perfect print surfaces for 3D printing. So time will tell. We'll do more tests. I'm going to test a whole load more materials and see how it performs and see whether uh, I see any degradation in performance or, or any increase in performance. Uh, I have a funny feeling that I might even get an increase in PLA uh, performance if this coating on the surface, this oelophobic coating, does actually wear, wear down. Um, just because it's not quite, it's only a tiny bit down, there's a little bit less than it is with just normal boron silicate glass. So we'll see what happens and thanks for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time.